We love IPOs here. Speaking of markets and ringing of bells, and welcome to the local Bourse W.A. Kaolin. This is no startup, but the owners have pumped millions of dollars and thousands of hours into delivering a product used everywhere from paper and ceramics through to fiberglass, rubber, plastic, pharmaceuticals and cosmetics as well. Plenty out there. Well, we're joined by Chief Executive Andrew Sorensen. He'll take a moment out of a historic day for him. Uh, the newest name and joins us live via Skype. Welcome to Ausbiz. Thank you for joining us on the program this afternoon. Uh, look, $22 million in the bank. Uh, what's, uh, what's going on now? What's, what's the next plan from here? Well, it's very important for us to uh, get started on uh, spending that money very wisely for all the stakeholders. Um, we've got a plan to build a plant out at Wikipin, which is adjacent to our mine, and that plant will have uh, 200,000 tonnes capacity of kaolin, and kaolin's uh, the mineral that we've been involved in for 20 years, as you say. Kaolin, like, I'm not going to lie, most people have never heard of it. What's good about it? Well, what's good about it for us is that we've got a very pure resource and we've got plenty of it as well. Um, but in terms of the market, uh, it's used in paper, ceramics, fiberglass, rubber, even cosmetics and pharmaceuticals. So it's a very widely used mineral. And as you say, it's not well known on the uh, ASX, but uh, you know, we've been involved with this project for 20 years and poured a fair bit of money into the development of not only our unique process, but also the uh, market. Uh, and we've got some really good offtakes with partners to support our production plans out at Wikipin. Well, let's just go down that path. When it comes to where the demand is coming from, who is buying the product? Okay, yeah. So uh, our biggest offtake partner is a Taiwanese company, uh, and they're servicing the fiberglass market. And then we have customers in Japan, in Vietnam, and Thailand, and also in China, of course. But uh, I was watching uh, your article just before, so uh, that's, there's certain, certainly some information there to be taking in. Yeah, um, I'm curious then, have you seen a slowdown in demand through the pandemic or is this a sort of commodity that is needed regardless? Talk to us about this, about the demand side of the equation. Yeah, well, demand has been very strong and it's been very uh, buoyant during the uh, pandemic. Uh, it goes into building products as well. I didn't mention uh, this, the Australian building products uh, market is very buoyant at the moment and they're pulling very strongly and they... They did go a little bit soft during um, uh, August, September, but uh, those orders have come back strong. Same with the fiberglass market going into China. Uh, we've got strong orders uh, and our order book is full through till February as we speak. So uh, we're, we're in a pretty good shape in terms of uh, forward orders. Andrew, uh, you may be public now, but you've been a private company that's been around for quite a while. When it comes to where you sit, are you cash flow positive? Are you profitable? Uh, dividend outlook, what's, uh, what's on the horizon? Okay, yeah, so uh, the directors have decided to um, uh, adopt a 66% dividend payout ratio on MPAT, and uh, we've chosen to do that because the business is not very capital intensive. So we can pay those dividends and grow the business at the same time. We've got a staged ramp up. Uh, the first stage, as I mentioned, is funded by this IPO. And then we ch plan to do the next stage, which is adding another 200,000 tonnes uh, in a couple of years' time out of cash flow and we'll still be able to pay dividends. Well, good luck. Congratulations. Clearly a milestone for the company. And uh, yeah, we'll stay in touch when you reach some further milestones, Andrew. Great. Thanks very much. Thank you.